good day. Welcome to the Waxing and Waning podcast. My name is Wayne, and I am a South African American currently living in Durban, South Africa. And our family is on route back to Asia in July to help lead a school and to teach. This is episode five. In this podcast, we will talk about performance measurements that can be used to evaluate a a team's effectiveness. Specifically, we'll focus on 10 different things that we can use to evaluate a team and to help guide a team's work together in order to maximize results. Brought to you by Moon Dust Industries. Call us at 1 800 555 5555 for a free sample to the moon or dust. Okay, let's get started. Sorry for that brief pause, longer pause than normal. I would recommend you do something like this um, if you want to. If you're interested in evaluating one of your teams, is first pick a team to start with. Then think a little bit about the history and background of that team, when it was started, how many people are on the team, how many are new, how many are returning team members, um, has there been any attrition in the group, any leadership changes during that time when the team has been established etc. Then I want to introduce you to a list of 10 performance measures that I've developed from my coursework in my doctorate in organizational leadership. Number one is team meetings. These are performance measures directly uh, related to when the team meets together. For example, are there meeting norms that are clearly articulated and effectively utilized? Are group members performing functional roles with identifiable responsibilities for key meeting tasks? Can you see creative and critical thinking among group members while they meet? Are there any signs of social loafing? Are all team members contributing to a collaborative culture? Are characteristics of effective teamwork evident? Is cohesiveness evident? Are group members effectively using time during meetings? Are they sticking to agendas? Is there a timekeeper? Are group members focused on making moderate decisions? And is the team leader focused on making the more extreme team decisions? Is every group member coming to the meeting prepared? Are they pre-reading or reflecting on any other materials before meeting? Is the group skilled at reaching consensus? So those are all performance measurements for team meetings. I'm not going to read you the rest. Uh, There's another 20. I'm actually just going to read you the main categories. So that was team meetings. The second category is team communication. Third category, trust. This is among team members and organizational leaders. Number four, team cohesiveness and general functionality of the team. For example, there's five things under that one. Number five, team conflict. Six, team collaboration. Seven, team maturity. Eight, team roles and performance expectations. Nine, team leaders. And ten, school leaders. Team leaders is just highlighting some key responsibilities that need to be measured for the team leader. For example, is the team leader contributing to role ambiguity? Are expectations clearly communicated? School leaders, an example. Are school leaders giving professional learning that is geared towards the group strengths and areas of growth? Once you've established your criteria for measuring, then you go and evaluate that team. And you first start with the group strengths, and then you uh, decide what are the performance uh, improvement goals for the group. That's it for today. 
I hope that you leave today's podcast with a line of thinking, an idea, or a question to ponder or research that will impact your world of work. Make it a great day. Cheers.